Man, I was doing so good the first minute of the race. I was pedaling hard. I was going fast. And then all of a sudden, it's like I couldn't keep going anymore. I don't even know what happened. It was just like my legs started burning and I couldn't even pedal my bike. Hello, kids. Today, we're going to be talking about our friend, lactic acid. And I hope you're as excited as I am because it is going to be a fun one. So you get your bike, you do some training, you go to a race, and then after the race, you overhear some of your competitors talking about this thing, lactic acid. And while you don't really know what it is, you can tell just from the way they're talking about it that it's important for cycling and performance. So you go home wondering, what is lactic acid and how does it affect me? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Lactic acid has been one of the main topics of discussion within athletics for decades. And while it does sound pretty scientific and complex, it's my goal to help you understand it in a more simple elementary way. But before we get there, let's look at a few definitions. Oh yes, Merriam-Webster. Merriam-Webster defines lactic acid as a hygroscopic organic acid C3H6O3 present normally especially in muscle tissue as a byproduct of anaerobic glycolysis produced in carbohydrate matter usually by bacterial fermentation and used especially in food and medicine and in industry you see what i mean that's useless let's try another one encyclopedia.com is a little bit better lactic acid or lactate is a natural byproduct generated through the production of energy in the body and is produced by the body at all times Lactic acid is formed through the metabolism of the carbohydrate energy source glucose during the production of energy in the cell. So basically what we know so far is that lactic acid is produced when we burn carbs. And this is important because when we ride our bikes at high intensities, the primary fuel source in our bodies is carbohydrates, which means there will be a lot of lactic acid produced. However, one big misconception is that lactic acid is a byproduct of energy production when actually it is a fuel for energy production. You see, our bodies convert glucose into lactic acid and that lactic acid is used as fuel by our mitochondria. So the old school method of thinking was that when we go hard, our muscles excrete lactic acid and it is toxic for our muscles and our performance and this makes lactic acid the bad guy. However, the new method of thinking suggests that our body produces lactic acid because it's actually trying to give our muscles the fuel that it prefers. And what happens is our muscles can't utilize all of that lactic acid so it starts to accumulate. In this way of thinking, lactic acid could be the good guy. However, what I want you to understand from both of these is that either way, it is the accumulation of lactic acid that hinders performance. So what we're doing when we train is actually improving our body's ability to buffer or use this lactic acid so that it decreases lactic acid accumulation when we go hard in a race. Yes, this is some pretty complex stuff, but I want to try to dumb it down a bit so that we can understand it in a more simple way. Time to get the cups. <laughs> To help us better understand lactic acid accumulation, we're going to use cups with holes in them and water. The cup represents our body or our muscles. The holes in the cup represent our body's ability to buffer lactic acid. The water represents the lactic acid. So more water equals more lactic acid equals higher intensity. Here comes the fun part. So because lactic acid is something that our bodies are constantly producing and using, even when we're sitting on the couch watching TV, this is something happening. 
So to visualize this, this is us sitting on the couch and this is the intensity, barely anything. Our bodies can handle that, no problem. I mean, it's barely even dripping out the bottom of the cup because our bodies can handle that. All right, now let's go for an easy spin. An easy spin is a level up from the, from the TV watching. So we could spray it in there a little faster, but still no problemo. No accumulation. All right, now let's take things up a notch. You got a workout today. We're gonna do a tempo workout. Tempo workout, still below threshold, not that bad. So yeah, yeah, you got a good stream, but body's still able to get rid of it, you know. Cup is not overflowing. It is well below its capacity, right? You can do this all day. All right, you did your tempo workout. Now it's time to get serious. Let's go out for a threshold workout. This is a threshold workout. So the cup is managing, the water hose might not be, and it's not overflowing, at least not yet. I mean, this is manageable. Disregard all the water going out of the cup, but manageable, right? One of the biggest takeaways from this experiment is that when you're pouring water into the cup, faster than the cup can get rid of that water, it's only a matter of time until the cup overflows. And what this means for you as a cyclist is that when we go harder than threshold, it's only a matter of time until we blow up. And the harder we go, the shorter the duration. So and then once you get past threshold, the cup and the water were about the same rate. Anything above that is a ticking time bomb. This is a power interval. And you can see the cup is overflowing. And this is unsustainable. All right, so let's do a couple of my favorite workouts. This is a tempo with sprints workout. Tempo, you know, yeah, you're doing tempo. It's not bad. Tempo, it's manageable. You guys know this one. Every three minutes, oh, back to tempo. Yep, tempo with sprints. Every three minutes, oh, gosh, tempo, manageable, manageable. Three, three, three minutes, oh, three minutes, sprint. Oh, tempo. That's tempo with sprints. Now we can do an over-unders workout. This is threshold and VO2. Threshold, it's a pretty good stream. Yeah, it's getting closer to the top of the cup. It's getting closer and closer, but manageable. And then you do a minute of VO2 and it overflows, right? And then you go back to threshold and it slowly, slowly, slowly levels back down. It's not overflowing. And then your three minutes, four minutes, whatever is up, VO2, overflowing again, back to threshold, slowly. I mean, it is like right at the cusp of overflowing. VO2, you get the point. So what does this mean for training? It means that we need to somehow increase our body's ability to buffer lactic acid. Or in other words, we need to make the holes in our cup bigger so that we can then pour more water into the cup. One of the best ways to train this is high intensity intervals with minimal recovery. You might know these as Tabata intervals. And my go-to for this is 30-30s. Max effort, minimal recovery. This is a 30-30 workout. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And if you want to increase your body's ability to buffer lactic acid, you do those types of drills. And what happens is the holes in your cup get bigger. bigger holes. This is the goal of training. Oh, I almost drilled a hole in my hand. The goal of training is to increase the amount of holes in your cup so that 
when you go to train, you can now handle more and more holding. See, that's a lot, that's a lot, that's a lot of holes. That's a strong rider. That's like a Peter Sagan right there. So what does this mean for racing? It means that we have to be aware of our efforts. We cannot just pour water in our cup as quickly as possible without thinking about the consequences. And likewise, in a race, we cannot go as hard as we can without thinking about the effect it might have on our overall result. Nobody cares if you go as hard as you can in the breakaway and get dropped. What people care about is that you manage your efforts well and then win the race. Story time. When I was a junior, I got my start in mountain biking, but when I showed up to my first road race, I had no idea what I was doing. When the ref blew the whistle, I actually sprinted off the line thinking I was going to get the whole shot. And it was only a few minutes later when the entire junior team I was racing against came pace lining past me, and that was the end of my race. It was one of the most miserable days I had on, had on the bike, and I vowed never to race road again. However, there is a happy ending. The junior team actually recruited me, showed me the ropes, and got me back into road racing. And on that note, I'm done here. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't like the video, hit the subscribe button. Until next time, stay rad. This video might have been a lot more entertaining if instead of cups with holes in them, I had just used my mouth. <laughs>